All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Once again, it's your girl, Jasmine. So um, I know that a lot of people have been going through their journey of where God is taking them. And um, basically what you're, the situations that you're going through are for the glory of God. Now, um, there are going to be situations in your life where people around you um, do not see what it is that God is showing you. And because of that, um, you will get stoned. They don't see what God has showed you. Maybe you have written the vision and made it plain and God has been walking you through the vision of life. It's been tarrying. Maybe you wrote it in a journal and it's been coming to pass everything that God told you was going to happen, um, which has happened to me. So maybe you're at a point in life where it is, you just know within your heart, things are coming um, to uh, pass, you know, uh, the situations in your life, you know, have been rough or, during the season, but things are now uh, beginning um, to look bright. They're they're starting to come all together. Everything that God has showed you is coming together. And so here um, we're going to be in Acts uh, chapter 7, verse 54 through 60. But um, here's a man who um, basically he sees the glory of God and ends up getting stoned uh, to death because the people didn't believe in what it was that he was seeing. So here we look. It says, um, Stephen the martyr in verse 54, and when they had heard these things, them being the Pharisees, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus, standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out in a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out the city and stoned him. And the witness said, Down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Uh, here's this man, and he is standing up for the things in which God had called him to do. Uh, God told uh, Stephen, uh, you know, um, Stephen was chose. Uh, he was just preaching the gospel of Christ. And the people, um, you know, maybe these are people who have been in the church for a long time. Uh, these were religious people. And if you're a believer in Christ, in Jesus Christ, you have a relationship with Christ. You're reading your word daily. Uh, you're following the scriptures that he gives you daily to walk out your life life. You're following the vision which he told you. You're not just the Sunday goer. You're not just the Wednesday goer. You are constantly in your word of God every day. He's giving you new manna, telling you new places in which you're searching out to go in your life, uh, wherever it is uh, that he may take you. So here you are. Here's Stephen, and you know he's, he's saying he sees the vision of of what God has showed him. He sees uh, Jesus up here, and he sees God up here, and and um you know, and he sees them standing, and you know it's like they were so proud of him. Like yes, you know, keep preaching about Jesus, keep teaching about Jesus. Jesus is real, and here are these people. Uh, they are uh too stuck in uh the motions of uh the the church going, too stuck in in the motions of certain things, but they are not uh, living it out on a day-to-day -day basis. So, you you know, you may be stoned by people who are even in the church uh, because their walk is not where it may need to be, and, and they don't understand. See, uh, see, these people were walking with Jesus. There's a difference uh, from, you know, just, uh, oh, you know, I, I have you know, I know God, but they were walking with Jesus. Uh, when we look in the Bible, when it talks about uh, the rich young ruler, he said, I kept the commandments. I, I kept the commandments. Yeah, he kept the commandments. But one thing that we know that when Jesus went another way, he was, he, he didn't have, he didn't make it into heaven because he, when Jesus went this way, he went that way. So you may know the law. You may know, you may be a right, good person. You may be doing all, you know, good things, but it does not matter if you're not following 
Jesus. It does not matter if you're not following the scriptures daily. It does not matter. It, it doesn't matter because he knew these things. He knew the things in which it was. But when Jesus said, look, you're going with the ways of the world. I need you to go this way. He was like, oh, no, I'm not doing it. And so here we see that with the Pharisees. You know, he Stephen keeps telling, you know, basically saying to them, you know, this is Christ. This is the Christ, you know, and they're so stuck on the commandments and they're so stuck on, you know, um, oh, you need a King James version by now. Well, now this is true, but, you know, you get so stuck on certain things that you can't get inside the meat, you know, like inside the pages, get in the depth of what God is really trying to show you, get in depth of what it is that, you know, uh, you get a daily word from heaven, meaning each day he's going to give you what it is that you need to get by and here Stephen is preaching the gospel uh basically you know telling them what God the vision of what God has showed them you, like I said maybe you got a vision of what something that God has showed you and you know um and all of a sudden because they didn't like it they didn't like what the vision was in which um they were showing the basically that Stephen was showing they stoned him to death they stoned him to death but one thing that we will see you know, because maybe at that at this point in your life, you got to realize that when you are getting stoned to death, it said, and they stoned Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. But I like this because he said, and he kneeled down and he cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin on their charge. See, Stephen knew even though they were stoning them, he was still going to pray for them because they, you know, uh, you look at Jesus when he died on the cross, he said, uh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. Uh, you know, maybe you have, uh, you know, maybe Christ has been standing right in front of your face uh, and is using somebody and you've literally been stoning them to death. Why? Because they, you are not doing the things in which God wants you to do, uh, but you want to continue staying in the habits of what it is that you think is right. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you ask God to come into your life and you want to serve God and do those things, your life is no longer yours uh your life is god so that means that you know you ask god to, you want to do the will of god uh, that uh, and takes everything that means we are not to be going in the ways of the world that no cost we are you know I'm, I'm doing a study right now on bethel you know bethel is um you know this holy place you know it's like that place where you are no longer walking with the ways of the world you know when abraham left um egypt when Abraham left, um, when Abraham left, when God called Abraham to leave his hometown, when the, told, told him to leave Ur, and basically he, so he leaves and he ends up in Bethel, which is a holy place. Basically, he was like full of worship, full in God. And then where did he end up? Because of a famine in the land, because of a time of lack, he ended up in a famine in where there was a famine in the land. And because of that, what happened to him? He ended up, uh, basically end up back in the world because of famine see sometimes we can end up back in the world because of famine and the people who are following us are in danger because we uh when we're in the world we go back to the world when you know um Abraham started in, in Bethel, where he started, he left Ur and, and ended up in Bethel, which is a holy place. And then, and then because he got discouraged, he ended up in the world. He ended up back in the world, back up in the world, uh, serving, um, you know, basically like underneath other gods, you know, in the world and, and almost led his wife into danger because he wasn't do because there was a famine. And sometimes when there's famines in our, in our lives, we get discouraged and we end up back in the world and we end up doing things in the world, you know, or, you know, um, it says, you know, that he, he also had, you know, there was a place in the South. If you look in the scripture, there's a place in the South. And basically what happened is when you when you look and you break down self in the Bible, it means that it's, it's a place of lukewarmness. So basically what had happened was it's like a place that if you're in the South, is this, you're trying to serve the world and you're trying to serve God too. But God w doesn't want us in Egypt. He doesn't want us in the South. He wants us in Bethel in that holy place, you know, meaning, you know, we are totally unto God. And so... Basically, Stephen, you know, it says, but he being full of the Holy Ghost. So he's full. See, he's full of the Holy Ghost. He's full of God's spirit. He's full. Like he is in Bethel. He is full of God. There is no, I want to serve the 
Um, I want to serve the world. I want to serve. I want to be on Egypt, uh, serving the world. I don't. I want to be lukewarm. No, Stephen was a martyr, meaning martyrs basically die for Christ. Meaning their whole life, they're sold out. Uh, whether you, um, basically they're sold out to God. Basically, whether you kill them, whether you crucify them, whether anything, they are going to die for the purpose of Christ, to tell people about Christ. And here Stephen is, that's what he did. He died for Christ. And it says, but he being full, because he was full of the Holy Ghost, you know, he was not empty. And we need to understand, we need to be full in Christ. There's some of us who are lukewarm. And so you have a circle and then half of it is Christ and the half of it is the world. We don't need to be in that place or all of us is the world. No, we need to be full in Christ, full in Christ. So it says, but being full in the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly unto heaven. Uh, he knew that heaven was his home and he saw the glory of God. Uh, we need to uh, be doing everything that we need to do is under the glory of God. See, he, he knew that he knew. I know that Stephen knew that everything that he was going to do was going to be under the glory of God. And, and it said that a man named Saul, uh, Saul from Tarshish was there when he was being stoned. And we'll, and we'll, and we'll uh, later on see uh, down, uh, if you continue reading your Bible, that Saul ends up getting uh, uh, persecuted on the, um, basically convicted and, and, and uh, basically persecuted on the road to, like he was out there persecuting Christians, and then God met him on the road to Damascus and said, you know, uh, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he ends up getting converted uh, because of uh, the things that he was doing. Uh, Saul, you know, he was a good, upright, uh, religious man, and he thought he was doing the good deed unto God, but he was killing Jesus' people. He was killing uh, the people in which uh, Christ had sent out there to spread the gospel. Now, there, you know, there's a lot of people who are religious out there uh, who are probably killing the people who are out there trying to spread the gospel, who are out there just trying to do the things in which God has called them to do and literally are are, are persecuting and killing them. So I'm going to put up the first few questions and then we're going to carry on. Are right, you guys? Are you getting stoned because of preaching the truth that Jesus Christ is Lord? Are you in Egypt serving the world, the South serving God and the world, or Bethel, or holy place full in God? Would you call yourself a martyr, meaning you are sold out for Christ? All right, guys, so um, here we are in John chapter 10, verse 22. So basically, um... This is, uh, Jesus was charged with blasphemy. So it says, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. And then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, how long doest thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because you are not my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall a man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered to them and says, it is, is it not written in your law? So this is in the beginning of the Bible. Um, this is in the beginning of the Bible where it talks about in Genesis how um, the when Adam 
deceived Eve and basically, I mean, when the serpent deceived Eve and basically it says, uh, if you eat of the fruit, you know, you shall become as gods. Um, and it says, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods with a little g. Um, if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the son of God. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. If I do the works of my father, if I do not do the works of my father, believe me not. But if I do, thou ye believe not me. So either way, they weren't going to believe. Believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Therefore, they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again behind Jordan unto the place where John the first Baptist, uh, where John at first baptized. And there he abode and many restored unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true and many believed on him. So here is a place where uh, Jesus is sitting here talking uh, basically uh, to the Pharisees and, and, and uh, to the, the people um, in Jerusalem. Uh, um, I, I don't know exactly if it was Pharisee. So, um, yeah, but basically Jesus is talking to the people in Jerusalem and they and he was at a feast. And basically they were saying unto him, like, you know, they're saying, then come the Jews around about him. How long doest uh, thou make us to doubt? If you be the, the Christ, simply tell us. So basically, you know, they know that he is the Christ. Uh, they, but, you know, they're, they're trying to uh, find fault in an innocent, perfect man. They're trying to fa uh, find fault in his works, uh, trying to find fault in, in you know, uh, everything that he does because he is the Christ. Uh, so because um, he is the Christ, uh, he's trying to find fault in him. It says, and Jesus answered them, Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye not believe. So basically he had told them before, I am the Christ, and they did not believe. So there are going to be people in your life that no matter if you're telling them the walk in which you're trying to do for Christ, if you're following Christ, if you're doing what Christ has called you to do, they are not going to believe you whatsoever. Um, and there are going to be a time, point in time, where you can preach uh, the gospel, talk uh, the gospel. Uh, here's Jesus. He's going around. He's telling people the gospel, but they do not believe him. And, and this is going to happen to us in life. We are going to keep talking. We are going to keep talking, telling people about Jesus, telling them the things that Jesus told you to say. All you're doing is being a, uh, uh, all you're doing is being a vessel in which God wants to use. And, and because of it, uh, they are going to want to stone you. See, God is trying to use Jesus as his chosen vessel, the chosen vessel to save the people of the world. And here, all he's doing is walking in the will of God for his life. And it says, and I told you, and you did not believe. Uh, basically, you know, um, here is, you know, even all throughout the Bible, it talks about how Jesus was going to come. And even John the Baptist had made the way for him uh, to come basically telling him all these things in which uh, was going to happen because he was the Christ he is the Christ uh, he's still alive to this day uh, he's in heaven waiting to come back to get his kingdom but basically what happened is is he kept telling them and basically they did not believe so there's going to be people you're going to keep telling them about Christ. You're going to be t keep telling them about what Christ sent you for. You know, I, I, what I've learned is because I do a lot of uh, tra uh, when I when I do travel and, and I go different places and maybe I may even travel down the street and I'll meet someone down the street. Whether they take it or whether they decide to deny it, I did what I had to do. Um, whether, you know, you may get convicted by the things that I'm saying because I'm, I'm preaching the truth and preaching the word of God. I said, but, you know, but whether you decide uh, to take it is 
up to you. Uh, there may be a vision that God gave you in your life. God had you write it down and it's going to come to pass when it comes to pass. You're speaking the words in which God has told you to speak, uh, speaking the words in the vision of which God has showed you for your life. Uh, it's going to come to pass and whether they believe it or not, it's going to come, but don't get discouraged because you know what? Like here, it, told, it says right here, Jesus even told them that he was the Christ and they did not believe it was going to happen. It says, but, uh, but ye believe not because you are not my sheep. They were not his sheep. They were uh, probably just religious folk who weren't uh, wa walking it out day to day. We have to be walking it out day to day in we can't stay. We need to be in the meat. We can't stay milk. There are people who are in the church who will be there for a long time. But just because you're in the church for a long time does not mean that you have grown for the to the fullest potential of which you need to grow. Here they are. Uh, these people have they have probably been in the church for uh, you know a very long time. They know they know the word, but Christ was right in front of their face, and they kept crucifying him. Uh, basically, maybe you are preaching the word of God uh, to people because God keeps giving you messages. Jesus keeps giving you messages to send to people, and they keep crucifying you, not knowing that they're crucifying Christ. Because when they crucify you and they and, and all that other stuff, they're crucifying Christ. I remember there was one time where someone denied me and I sat at the beach and I talked to Christ. I talked to uh, and I, you know, I looked up in the sky and I said, God, you know, why is this happening to me? You know, they just denied me. And God whispered in my ear, Jasmine, they weren't denying you because if you were doing the same thing that they were doing and in the world, you'd be perfectly fine. But they denied me because you I'm trying to use you. So they're shutting the door in your face because I'm trying to use you and they don't like it. They don't like it because some people, they just don't want to change. They're so stuck in their ways. They don't want to make the changes in which they need to make for themselves. And it says, and as I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. You know, a lot of people, there's a lot of people in the Bible that, you know, uh, there was only uh, 12 disciples. There's a lot of people in the Bible who would want to go follow Jesus. Some of them said, well, Lord, let me follow you. And he said, well, you know, come see where I stay. And some people didn't want to, oh, no, that doesn't look comfortable. That doesn't look inside my means. I, I don't think I could follow Jesus. Not everybody was chosen to be a disciple of Christ because not everybody was willing to take the steps and leave their ways to follow Jesus. So we need to, um, you know, you know, it talks about counting the cost to be a disciple because some people, um, you know, they 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 count the cost of what it's like to be a disciple and then they stray away from it. Uh, they don't do the things in which, you know, um, you know, it, it's supposed it's supposed to be done. We look at example as Judas. Judas kissed the cheek of Jesus and then betrayed him right after. He was a disciple of God. He chose to follow Jesus, but got him nailed on the cross. Uh, got him nailed on the cross. There are plenty of Christians out there who will, um, you know, who will choose to follow Jesus, but be right there nailing him upon the cross because they don't want uh, to hear the things. There was several situations uh, in the Bible where, you know, uh, you know, Judas was the treasurer, you know, uh, and he was taking care of all the money and stuff like that. And here comes, uh, uh, I believe it was Mary Magdalene, and Mary Magdalene was kissing the feet of Jesus, and 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 all that ointment was all over her and he just called it a waste why are you wasting it you know why are you wasting it? and they didn't understand why is she wasting all that on jesus you know but but jesus didn't think it was a waste uh, jesus needed to be anointed for his burial because you know the same person who was talking about what a waste end up crucifying him at the end of the bible why is she, why is she doing all those things with jesus why is uh she uh you know in the world like that why is she acting the way she is she does that doesn't look procure uh, that doesn't look right to society that's not the way the world should work why is it like this but instead of understanding why it was like that they were too busy crucifying jesus too busy crucifying uh and, and, and trying to stone the disciples uh trying to stone jesus uh, too busy that why because uh, they they didn't understand they were too stuck in their ways and christ was right in front of them right in front of them it says my sheep hear my voice and i know them and they follow me uh the disciples they followed him. Not everybody is a disciple of Christ because no, not everybody will take the steps 
of what they need to do. See, we get we get into the we get saved and then we just think we can just stay the same. We don't have to read our Bibles. We don't have to pray. We don't have to take those crazy steps of faith that look out of this world uh, sometimes and crazy to society because we don't like the feeling of being uncomfortable. Um, you know, like I look at myself, you know, I keep, you know, I keep talking and actually, you know, this is how at the beginning of this uh, sermon all started. I said to myself earlier, I said, you know what, I'm tired of talking because no one hears what I'm saying. And, you know, I, I, you know, some people, they don't want to do what it is that Christ has called them to do, because I'm going to tell you this Sometimes when people are too busy crucifying you and stoning you to death because you're trying to do the things of Christ, it doesn't feel good. It does not feel good. You think Jesus, it felt good to Jesus when he was hanging on the cross? No, it didn't. But when we follow Christ, we have to take up our cross. That means we are being crucified with Christ. So it's not going to feel good all the time. It's not going to be all blessings all the time. It's not going to be all, oh, you know, thank you, Jesus. I've gone through some hard times since I've taken up my cross and followed Jesus and traveled. You know, I, I've, I've, I've lost a lot of people on the way uh, who are people who are family members who who have abandoned me turned their back on me deleted me off of Facebook I've, I've you know I have friends who literally tried to like tell me to stop doing my ministry all this stuff because you know people I call friends uh, people who are from the church you know uh, you know you can anybody you could even imagine because it doesn't always feel good because you know when you're doing this you know sometimes there's certain things that you have to do to get people's attention. It took Jesus' death to die on the cross to get their attention that they needed a savior. That they needed a savior in their life. You know, sometimes, you know, we'll look, uh, we'll look in, you know, back when we looked at Stephen. See, it took it, uh, uh, it took Stephen's death for someone uh, to plant a seed in someone else's life because, because of Stephen's death, Saul, Saul rose up and ended up writing a whole bunch of the New Testament and, and became this amazing Christian, amazing servant of God just because of Saul uh, being crucified and stoned to death, uh, basically being stoned to death right in front of all those people. Hey, sometimes it takes us as people uh, being stoned to death and or maybe being crucified by those around us um, to to get others' attention, you know, to get that seed planted. You know, Stephen died. You know, my pastor had said this last week. Stephen died, literally died, died. And we think, oh, he's not going to get any glory. You know, no glory, gonna, nothing is going to happen from the situation. Stephen literally got stoned to death and died. But Saul ended up coming around. So it took that man to lose his life for Jesus, for Jesus, for another man to come up and spread all this word unto all these people and to suffer for God. But he suffered for God in a good way because a whole bunch of people were getting saved. He wrote a whole bunch, and, and, his, and his fruit, his fruit is all right here in the Bible from writing a whole bunch of the Bible. His fruit is still helping people. Just because of this one man getting stoned, my pastor had said, it's such a blessing. Uh, so just because, you know, but, you know, just because people are going to do this. We can't give up because, you know, it says that Jesus escaped. So even though you're getting stoned right now, you may be getting stoned right now, but you haven't got crucified. You know, they're trying to stone you right now. They're trying to stone you right now, but they haven't yet crucified you because it said that, you know, when they were about to go stone Jesus, he escaped. See, Jesus is not, God is not going to let you and not going to let you die be completely uh you know he wasn't gonna let jesus to be completely dead on the cross until it was his time until it was his time you know so we're you know you got to keep on uh pushing keep on uh preaching the gospel keep on uh teaching so i'm gonna put up the next few questions and we're gonna carry on all right you guys peace are you being stoned to death for someone else's salvation do people believe what you're saying when you are speaking the word, or do they just ignore it? Are you taking the steps to be a disciple? 
All right, you guys, so we're going to be in Acts 18. Um, so it says, And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy, his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheus were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and he said unto them, Your blood be upon your own hands. I am clean from hence. Forth I will go unto the Gentiles. And he departed thence and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one who worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogues. And Cyprus, the chief ruler of the synagogues, believed the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians heard, hearing, believed, and were baptized, and spake the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. Do not be afraid do be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace for i am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for i am much for i have much people in the city and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of god among them uh, so we're going to stop in verse 11. So basically what's happening is um, Paul goes out and he goes to preach uh, uh, about Christ. And, and the, you know, he was, he's preaching about Christ. Uh, he had just went to a, um, the city of Athens where they worship an unknown God, um, an unknown God. And, and basically, like, he's sitting here preaching, you know, and, and he's telling them, he's, he's testifying, he's professing that Jesus Christ is Lord. And they opposed him and they blasphemed him. And he basically shook his clothes off and he's like, you know what? You know what? I'm cleansed in Christ's blood. I have Jesus in my life. I'm on the right track. I'm reading my Bible daily. I'm doing the things in which God has called me to do. I'm, I'm on the vision in the road in which God has called me to do. I'm doing all these things and everybody is over here denying me. I'm clean. I have the blood of Christ. You know, it says, I am clean, for hence I will go unto the Gentiles. You know, and he departed, thence and he entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one who worshiped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogues. So basically, like, he's like, like, whatever, God, like, I, I have a relationship with you. And, you know, like, actually, it was kind of funny because this actually happened to me yesterday. I was actually talking to one of my friends, and, you know, like, I mean, of course, you know, I usually, you know, preach about some things that, you know, happen in my life. And uh, I told you guys earlier, I was just discouraged. And, and this and this uh, Bible study lesson happened because I was like, you know, Lord, I'm kind of uh, tired of speaking because it just seemed like no one was hearing me out. And so here's Paul. And, and this has happened the same thing to him. It's like he keeps talking and it's like, you know, you keep saying you talking, talking, and then you don't see, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes, you know, of course, it's going to be harvest season. But it's like, you keep talking, you know, you, you keep, you know, because I had to travel and I went, you know, over to California, I went to Tennessee, I went to Florida, you know, and then, you know, I've been, you know, and then I do my Bible study lessons and it's just like, Lord, you know, you just feel like you just keep talking and everybody, you know, a whole bunch of people will just sit there and, you know, I was talking to one of my friends yesterday and he kept talking to me and he's like, you know, he's like, you know, just tell me what you're, you know, learning right now, you know, to fill me in. And I was like, okay. And when I was talking to him, he's like, why does your face look like that? And, you know, I was like, you know, I'm feeling kind of discouraged, you know, because I have Christ. And, you know, Lord, I could just stop talking, you know, I was trying to tell him. And I was just like, you know, I could do these things, you know, because I, I know the things in which God has called me to do. There was actually a point 
Um, I think it was like two weeks ago where every single day, you know, I was feeling just discouraged that I would just sit in my basement and just be quiet. And I wouldn't want to talk to anybody. I would just be quiet because it just felt like everything I said, because I was trying to do the things in which God was showing me on a day to day basis, that some of the stuff I was saying was affecting other people's lives around. And, and you know, nobody wants to continue hearing the, you know, some people don't want to continue hearing the things in which God is trying to reach them in which God is trying to tell them on a day to day basis. It's not just a relationship one a day. You know, I, 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 if I had a relation, like I had tons of relationships, I get so upset. I get so upset if I can't hear from the, the from someone that I love on a day to day basis, I get so upset. So why are you going to continue to ignore me so that, that's basically what God's saying like why are you going to continue to ignore me I'm trying to talk to you daily not just once a day not just you know when you want to talk to me not you know you know but daily like you know this world is a hundred uh, years give or take we are here to do the will of God yes there's many distractions in our lives we have televisions we have you know different activities out there but we need to be in this word of God daily not when you know oh yeah well no no like if you guys saw my other bible like i it, it doesn't even have both the covers the covers then fall off so like I, I believe like the my chapter in mark like the page is like halfway ripped through like every almost every other scripture is highlighted that god has had me either do a lesson on or you know go out there and talk to people about um you know i do a spoken word so every time i am about to do a spoken word i read a scripture and then it usually goes with the uh something that god wants me to speak that night just highlighted god wants to speak to us daily and here's this man testifying oh jesus christ is lord and they're just persecuting him and throw him under the bush and and he's just you know what you know what i'm tired I, I you know what i don't have to you know i know jesus and i know the things he wants for my life and i'm all set you know we can get that attitude you know i'm all set i i i know you know um these things you know um you know i've had a, a point you know in my life you know um when I, I remember when I was in school, you know, I, I used to not want to come home uh, to Massachusetts because of all the people who used to make fun of me when I was younger. But I knew that God had called me uh, to do a certain work. So I came down, uh, down back to Massachusetts. So, you know, I, I go around and I, you know, help with my friends and I talk to a lot of my friends who aren't saved and, you know, and I, and I love them like real friends, just like Jesus would love, you know, uh, the people around him, you know, regardless of, you know, if they're not saved, regardless of whether they're saved, Jesus loved them. Uh, but he wants them to be saved because you're not going to go to heaven and you're going to go to hell if you're not saved. That that's just the difference. I can love you all I want to, but until we have that relationship, uh, you know, I, I can't be there you know when you think of when i'm you know that like that's why it's so important you know the bible says don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers meaning you know don't marry an unbeliever because they're gonna think you know oh well you know i can get the promise of god if you're not saved you can't get to heaven and the promise of god is eternal life and you can't have eternal life without jesus and you know you can't have eternal life without jesus and basically in the bible though the woman represents the church and the man represents uh, the Christ, you know, and so if the Christ is marrying an unbeliever, you know, yeah, well, you can't get to heaven being an unbeliever. So that's a lie. We are we are playing out the roles of, of Christ on a day to day basis. So but we need to make sure we need to make sure that we continue to testify see uh you know cry, uh, you know it says in a vision um the lord spoke to paul one night in a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace hold not thy peace for i am with thee and no man shall set thy feet to hurt thee for i have much people in the city uh you know i oh man i mean i literally i the other one night i i was going through a situation and i just you know uh god was basically had spoke to me before about how um uh how stephen had gotten um stoned to death and literally without even a shadow of doubt i end up getting stoned to death and and it hurt 
And I just, you know, this that's, you know, and that's why I had been talking to my friend and saying to my friend, you know, I'm at the point where I'm just like, you know, I just don't, I don't even want to speak no more because sometimes, you know, it's like you just keep speaking and no matter what, they, they people don't want to listen. They don't want to hear what you got to say. It's, you know, you're just doing the wrong thing and be honest, you know, you're doing what God has called you to do. See, that was the issue with the the Pharisees. They were too busy thinking that they were doing the right thing, that they didn't see Jesus right in front of them. And they and they kept trying to kill him without even knowing. And it gets hard because sometimes you feel like everybody's after you, you know, because you're just trying to do the things in which God has called you to do. But you got to keep pressing forward. It says that I am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in the city. I have much people in the city. So, and he continued on and he preached there for a year and six months teaching the word of God. So no matter what it is, you, you cannot get discouraged. <clears throat> you cannot get discouraged in what it is that you're doing. So I'm going to put up the next few questions and then we're going to carry on. Are right, you guys? Have you gone weary? Do you sometimes think, well, I have Jesus. Why should I keep telling others when they don't seem like they're going to change? No. Don't give up. In due season, you shall reap what you sowed. Harvesting season is coming. All right, you guys. So I know this is a little long lesson, but um, we're going to look in um, Jeremiah. <clears throat> so in Jeremiah 1, basically God had called Jeremiah to basically be a prophet of the nation. He was to go out and speak to the people, uh, tell the people what, what it is that, you know, he needed to tell them so they could correct what they weren't doing right, uh, correct those things that weren't what God wanted them to do. And um, Jeremiah was to go in the season in which he was called. You know, there's a season in which we're called to speak and do these things. We aren't supposed to choose them. Uh, God has already chosen the season which we do it for us. So if we think that, oh, God, I'll just do it later, I'll put it off, you know, uh, yeah. When uh, when uh, Jesus comes back, you can't say, oh, God, you know, uh, he's going to, you know, ask you, did I, he's going to say, did you do the things in which I called you to do? Not, uh, oh, Lord, I'm going to put it off later. No. Uh, today is the day. Today is the day to start whatever it is that God's been telling you to do. Today is the day. There is no running from it. Before we before we go there, uh, we're going to, you know, look at Jonah. Um, Jonah was a man of God. He was a man of God. And uh, he was a prophet speaking for God to do the things in which God had called him to do. And because uh, he did not like the place in which God was sending him to, he ran. Um, God has a place for you. And he, he, he has a plan for you. And he knows the things in which you need to do. And like I said, some of the things in which we need to do in our life, we aren't always going to like it. Um, you know, but we ask to be used of God. Don't ever think, you know, you didn't ask to be used of God. Uh, you know, we are to, we are vessels unto God. We are to be here to do his will, to do his purpose for our life. And if we think that we could just put it off and think, you know, here's Jonah and God's like, okay, go ahead. Uh, go to, um, I believe it was uh, Tarshish. And he told him to go to Tarshish. And he, he runs and goes the other way. Um, Jonah, where where are, you, where are you going? That's not where I told you to go. Oh, oh, you think you can do my will your way? That's not the things of God. Okay, so here he goes. He goes on the ship and he ruins other people's lives because it was a great storm. So whenever we run from God and, and the calling from God in which he has called us to, um, he ru we ruin other people's lives because we're not doing the things in which God has called us to do. We need to do the things in which God has called us to do. Uh, so he's over here and the ship, the storm, you know, and so the storm's getting worse and worse the longer they keep Jonah on the ship. So finally Jonah's like, okay, well, this has happened to me because I, I ran away from my God. So just throw me off the ship. Well, um, Jonah, you need to wake up because, you know, and, and Jonah, Jonah's over here resting. We think, you know, we're resting easy. Oh, yeah, life's good. Life is good. See, these people are over here panicking because the ship is in a storm and their life is in a storm. But I'm resting on the boat while the storm is going because I know it's my fault because I ran away from God. Um, you're ruining other people's lives because you're running away from God. That is not the plan he has for your life. You are stopping their 
they have a place that they needed to go in their life. Everybody has a journey. Everybody has a destination. And by you going there, you're interrupting their destination. You're causing storms in their life, storms that didn't even need to be there. They could have made it all the way to their destination without you interrupting, without you causing damage, without you causing any harm. But instead you decided to run from God. And because of it, uh, you have literally put another twist and turn in their life that didn't have to be there because you, but people don't, don't care about that. But it says right here in Jeremiah, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before I, uh, uh, before uh, you, thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet of the nations. Then I said, I, uh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. Whatever age you are, whoever you are, male, female, young or old, I am 22 years old. A lot of my friends go out clubbing, drinking, and what do I do? I teach the word of God at 22 years old. And I started doing this probably at um, 19, just going around, um, you know, fully doing full-time ministry last year. Uh, so, so basically, uh, you know, almost two years uh, coming around almost two years. You are not too young to do what God has called you to do. There is no excuse. Oh, when I get a little bit older. Well, you know, tomorrow's never promised, so you need to start doing what God has called you to do now. Then it says, uh, um, it says, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. So everybody God has sent is sending you to, you need to go to. I, you know, I understand because, you know, be doing the will of God is not just, you know, on Sunday, like I said, it's all day, every day. Maybe you may order a pizza and God may tell you to get a Bible track and give the track to the pizza man. You may be in the store and somebody may approach you and God may just encourage you. I went to the store today and I bought a dress. I bought a dress and right there in front of the cashier, I did not care. Because I was going to glorify God because the dress was cheaper than I thought it was. And so I said, God, I praise you in advance and I thank you for what you did because I thought I was going to be paying more for my dress. But you blessed me. Right? No shame in my game because he is God and he is real. And regardless, one day I'm going to have to meet him. And he's going to say, well, you missed out on that opportunity. You had a chance to glorify me. You had a chance to tell somebody about me. You had a chance to do this, but you didn't do it. You were too busy in your own life, in your own problems. But you know what? This is all temporary. Those problems come here to distract you from the will of God. You need to pay attention. You need to pay attention to the things in which I need you to do. Through the storms, through the tests. I got you. Just do what I've called you to do. Mm, hallelujah, Jesus. My God. Thank you, Lord. And I said, I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of their faces. You know, uh, Stephen had no shame in his game. He didn't care. They were about to kill him and stone him. And he just didn't care. I see. I see God. And I see Jesus. You know, he, he saw them. I don't care. You know, you know, when you know what you know and you know that you serve a God, there is, should be no shame in your game. You know what you know. He said, do not be afraid of their faces. You know, I, I say I was I was so discouraged. And he said, why, why are you looking like that? You look like my friend said to me, you look like I'm not going to believe what you're saying. And here I am. I do this on a day to day basis. I sit there and I talk to people and I'm, I'm over there looking at him like. What, what what is he going to say? Like, because, you know, so many people keep persecuting me and, and, and saying, you know, this is not right. This is not right. Don't get discouraged. Don't be afraid of their faces. This is what God's saying. And, and I'm speaking to myself right now. This is what, Don't be afraid of their faces. You know, he said the same. He talked the same way to Paul. He said, I'm going to be with you as you're here talking to the people. And Paul stayed where he was for another year and six months. Why? Don't be afraid of their faces. Keep speaking. Keep teaching. Keep doing the things in which I have called you to do. These people need to be saved. These people need to come to repentance. They need to understand that what they're doing is not right. You know, I, like I said, you know, I sit here and I, and I speak to people. God uses me sometimes to speak to myself. So here I am speaking to myself, 
You know, don't be afraid. I'm telling myself not to be afraid of their faces right now. So, you know, God's still going to speak unto you. Just continue. God's going to deal with you while you're, de- while you're dealing with other people and telling other people, I, you know, don't be afraid of their faces. Don't do these things. You know, God still works in your life. You know, if, if he needs to convict you and bring conviction in your life, he's going to do it in, in other in, in, in ways, you know, that, that he needs to do it. So, but keep speaking to them. We're all imperfect people. We just need to do, we just need to be that willing vessel to do what God has called us to do. It says, and then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I put thy words in their mouth. I tell you, I kid you not. I opened my Bible and I just spewed. And all this, I did not know I was going to say. I just opened to what God had told me to say. And that's all you have to do, just open your mouth and it will come, you know. But the Bible says that we need to be ready in season and out of season. Because there will be a point in time where, you know, us as Christians, we, we won't even be able to have our Bible. And if we're not prepared, and if, you know, if we're not ready in season, out of season, if you don't know your word, then what happens in that season, we need to tell somebody something that Christ needs for them. You need to be ready because if not, you won't have the word in which God needs for them. What if you are the last person in which they'll see before they die? Then they won't get the word in which they need before they die. It says, and see, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdom to foot out and put to pull down and to destroy and throw down and to build and plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, seest thou? And said, I see a rod and an almond tree. And then the Lord said unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word and perform it. See, it ha- there. God is going to do what he needs to do. And everything comes in season. So when he calls you, you know, he calls you in a season, in a time in which he needs to call you. And and he'll also show you where it is that he needs you to be. It says, and, and, and we continue on, the word of the Lord came unto me the second time saying, what seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot and the face thereof is towards the north. And the Lord said unto me, out of the north is an evil and evil shall break forth upon all inhabitants. So the Lord is showing him what is happening in the place around him. And God will basically, if you're reading this Bible daily, is going to show you the things of which happening around you daily. So you can give people a timely word because they need to hear what's going on in that time so they can get it right now. Get it right now, not later now. Things need to change now. So you need to be with God in the season in which God needs you to be now because they need this word now tomorrow is not promised people are on their way to hell they need it now if we are christians and we are not doing the things in which god has called us to do we are not doing the, the will of god in which god has called us to do we won't be able to give them what they need now they don't you like i said you could be the last person they talk to before they die and you missed out on the opportunity because you weren't doing the right thing god you weren't reading your bible allowing god to give you what he needed to give to the people now that's why i said when i do my poetry i open my bible right before right before i'm about to do my poem pray over it and i read it and it goes unto the people it goes into the people and and you know and and I carry on because they need it now. It's timely right there in their life. Every day, God gives you a word from heaven because it's daily manna because different the seasons change. We can't be going off of old manna. We cannot go off of old manna. We need to go now because it's like sitting there and eating moldy bread. We do not want moldy bread. The Bible said that they... um. When the people of Israel went into the wilderness and they were uh, storing up manna from the day before, wake up and have worms and all this other stuff in it. We need the word daily because if not, it's going to be like molded bread. Nobody wants to eat moldy bread. I don't want to eat moldy bread. Don't give me moldy bread. I want bread from today. I want this word from today. What did God tell you today? Minister to my soul today. Not from stuff I learned 50 years ago when I got saved. Not from stuff when I used you learned last week when I got saved. I want stuff from today. Give me that daily word. 
Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And then the Lord said unto me, out of the north is an evil shall break upon the inhabitants. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, saith the Lord, and thou shalt come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem and against all the walls thereof round about against all the cities of Judah. And I will utter my judgment against them, touching their wickedness, who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worshipped the works of their own hand. We need to understand the glory goes to God. And here are another nation of, of uh, you know, people. I believe it was uh, the, the, the children of Israel. Here they are. And, and, you know, here they are, you know, burning incense to other gods. And they worshiped their own hands. We can't worship ourselves. We need to give all the glory to God. The glory goes to God. We cannot worship ourselves. We did not do this. God did it. God's giving us the word. We are just a vessel. We are the vessel. You know, we, can't, we did not do this. This is God's glory. The glory is that goes to God. They were born burning incense to other gods. They were burning incense to other gods. Um, we're going to turn to Exodus 33. And basically it was saying the same thing with Stephen. Um, he had called them a stiff-necked people. A stiff-necked people. Basically, here, um, here, here in Brad, chapter 32 of Exodus, it says, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come back. So basically what happened in uh, 31, Moses had went up and um, to Mount Sinai um, basically to go fast and um, do the things in which God had called him to do. And, um, you know, because the other people, basically, uh, these are the children of, of Israel. They had came out of Egypt. They had came out of um, the place. In, uh, so basically, you're coming out the world. Uh, you know, you're starting to live for Christ. God shows you your promised land and you deny him. And basically, these people, they weren't going to make it in the promised land because they stopped believing totally and utterly on what God wanted to do for their life. And because of that, um, because of their disbelief, they started worshiping other gods. See, Jonathan and Caleb, uh, uh, Josh, excuse me, Joshua and Caleb, they were going to make it to the promised land. Why? Because they kept believing in what God had them had for them. But those who stopped believing and started doing their own thing, you know, maybe God promised to restore some things in your life. And instead of that, you're like, oh, he's not going to restore it. So I'm going to go over here and do over this over here. I'm going to do this over here. But uh, how is that uh, trusting in God when you're doing your own thing? You're not doing the thing in which God has called you to do. And it says, and said, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered together unto Aaron and said unto him, up, come on, get up, make us gods, which shall go before us for as this Moses, for, at, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we woe not what is become of him. See, when you start following, see, here's Moses. Moses is the leader. He's leading people to the promised land. You know, I would count myself as a Moses. Here I am uh, preaching and teaching. God has me helping direct people to the promised land. And here, you know, um, I, I, you know, a couple weeks ago, I did the, the wilderness fast um, with everybody. You know, I put it on there and, you know, it'd be as if I was uh, sitting here doing the wilderness fast and, and I had left and all of a sudden the people you know, and maybe, you know, I'll, maybe, you know, if I got, if I stopped, you know, getting on YouTube and making videos and all of a sudden the people started going astray in which God was having me lead. And then here it is. It says the man was brought, ha, that has brought us out of the land of Egypt. We won't not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto him, break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of the wives of your sons and your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people break the golden earrings in which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron and he received them in their hands and they fastened it with engraving tools after he had made it a molten calf and said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So all of a sudden, the people who were leading them beforehand and Moses was leading them. Now they want to go. Oh, they don't want to, you know, hear the things in which Moses was selling them no more. Why? 
because they're not doing the right thing. So they want to have their own God. And they want to worship their own God and, and do their own thing. Why? Because they don't want to hear the things Moses has to do anymore. They they no Moses doesn't have any of the, the right things to say because Moses is over there in the wilderness. Uh, I'm basically in Mount Sinai uh, getting getting uh, hearing a word from God, hearing what God wants to tell the people. And they don't want to do that. And he says he received them at their hands and fashioned in a grave. So basically, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. How can you have a feast of the Lord worshiping false gods? See, people will love God, and they'll love the things in which God, and they don't even realize that they aren't really serving God. They're serving gods that they built unto themselves. Um, we look at uh, the Pharisee how the the Pharisee was out there praying, well, at least I'm not like them, at least I'm not doing what they're doing. And this other man, uh, he was praying to himself. He started praying to himself. He started praying to himself. And the, and the other man was over there praying. He was like, well, you know, at least I'm, you know, but he was just making a fool of himself because he, he thought he was better than everybody else. But he wasn't. He was a sinner just like everybody else. He needs Jesus just like everybody else. And it says, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before and an Aaron made a proclamation and said tomorrow we feast we cannot be feasting under the Lord when we're really feasting under other gods you know we can't do that a lot of people you know that there's there's a lot of people who are worshiping God but it's not really God it's not really God they're, they're either worshiping themselves or they're worshiping other gods they're worshiping the music they're worshiping their husband they're worshiping the car they're worshiping their boyfriend they're worshiping um you know they're worshiping whatever it is you're worshiping maybe a car maybe a house maybe the american dream maybe your college education maybe your degree maybe you're worshiping something else but you're not worshiping god so i don't know what it is that maybe you're worshiping but maybe it's something else and it says and they rose up in the morning, they offered burnt offerings and brought a peace offering, and the people sat down, ate, drank, and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. And they entered inside aside quickly, out of which, out of the way which I commanded them, and they have made a molten calf and worshipped it, and have sacrificed there unto them, and said. These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee out of e the hand of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen these people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people, meaning they were stubborn. They didn't want to get things right. God was trying to do certain things in their life. They didn't want to get things right. They'd rather do things their way. We need to open this Bible daily and do it our way. We don't need to be stubborn. You know, if God's trying to speak to you, if God's trying to use somebody to speak to you, you need to correct it now. Daily word. If it keeps getting repeated in your life, that means God is trying to tell you something 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 right now not tomorrow not today right now if he told you it last week you need to do it if you had to keep repeating himself you need to do it right now don't be stubborn if he told you to let go of the man that you're not that, that you're with let go because that's not who he wants you to be with if he told you that you're not supposed to take that job don't take the job if he told you uh, you know, don't drive down the street, you know, uh, because something may happen. If you feel like you're not supposed to go down the street, don't go down the street. Maybe you'll get in a car accident. Maybe God's trying to save you from something. I watched this thing where this man was supposed to go uh, to another country, and he prayed and he fasted, and God was like, don't get on the plane. The whole plane ended up, the plane crashed, and the whole plane ended up dying, everyone on that plane. If he would have not heard what God was trying to tell him, he would have died. We need to hear God. We don't need to be worshiping other gods. We need to do what God tells us to do, not what we think is best, not on our time, not on our schedule right now. When I left school and I got the call from God, people were saying, well, why don't you finish up your degree and do, you know, and finish up, you know. No, God was calling me now, not later now. I need to go now. When you got saved, God called you out of the world. It, it, I don't care if you were in the middle of drinking, smoking, partying, whatever it was you were doing. God called you then and then, took you out of the world, and changed your life drastically. And that's exactly what God did for me. The middle of school pulled me out, trained my life. And when I got saved, I was in the middle of drinking, partying, smoking, doing all that stuff. Always in the street, always running the street. God picked me up, 
I saved me and, and carried me on. And I went to college. He can pick you up in the middle of where you are. Do it now. Surrender to your life now. Stop worshiping those gods in which God, you're not, it's not God. You think it's God. It's not God. It's not God. Maybe you're worshiping in a drug. A drug is not going to help you. It's not going to save you. It's not going to bring you to heaven. Money. Money's not going to save you. It's not going to bring you to heaven. You need a savior. His name is Jesus Christ. Stop worshiping those gods. And God was furious with them. He even had to repent for them because they weren't doing. It said, and the Lord repented of their evil, which he had sought to do unto the people. Why? Because they weren't doing the things in which God had called them to do. They decided to do their own thing. And we can't do that. If God told you something in your life, you need to do it. You know, he told you basically they were to wait for Moses, their leader, because Moses knew what God was doing. Moses knew what God was doing. So they needed to wait for his leader. Instead, they did, they wanted to go elsewhere and do other things. And, 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 and God, the Lord had to repent for them because of their evil. They weren't doing the right things in God's eyes. And so we want to make sure because it's not good when God's repenting for you. That's not good because you won't repent because you don't want to let go of the things in your life in which God's trying to let have you let go of. We need to understand that we need to let go of some things. In our lives, we need to answer the call and do the things in which God has us do now instead of holding on to the things in which we think are best for us, making false gods that, that we think is, you know, God has certain things for us. But if God tells you to let go, let go. Don't hold on. Things will get worse. And you ruin other people's lives because you won't let go. All right, you guys. Well, I'm going to put up the last few questions, and I hope that whatever it is, however God is dealing with you in your life, that you uh, just change some things in your lives. All right, you guys. I love you so much. God bless. Peace. Are you running from God's plan? Do you think you're too young to preach the word of God? Are you afraid of people's faces? Is God showing you something around you that you know how he wants you to minister to the people are you feasting off of old manna or daily manna define stiff neck all right everybody well thanks again for tuning in until we meet again all right you guys god bless